So we've heard comments from a lot of people who are involved. There are others that are here in the room. Uh, if any of you have any questions for Big Rob, for the champ, uh, for any of the other team that he introduced, uh, please feel free. We're all that confident that he's just coming back to you. We don't even need to talk about it, right? <laughs> How do you envision the fight? That's what Big Rob first. Well, oh, I ain't going to take long this time. Sure. <laughs> 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 we win. <laughs> we win, we win, we win, and that's it. How are you going to win? Well, he wins with speed, agility, uh, uh, athleticism, and showing Klitschko something he's never, ever seen. You understand me? Like I was telling Dr. Lomax, there's no such thing as an insurmountable challenge. All you have to do is have a great engineer and have great people to, to change that challenge into something ordinary. Champ, any predictions? Any rounds? What he said. I'll take what he said. <laughs> no, but um, honestly, no, I, don't, I don't like to go into a fight and, and put any extra pressure on myself than what I already good, have good, with this yeah, fight. You know what good, I mean? I'm just right. going to go in here and do my very best to win this fight. There There's no go. prediction, no round, That's no it. knockout, no nothing. Right. The only thing I'm predicting is me coming back with a victory. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Uh, Eddie, I, I've watched all the um, most of Kutcho's fight in a lot of years, and watching the Dimitrenko fight, and, and I noticed everyone tried to stay back from Klitschko. What did you learn from fighting Dimitrenko? And, and most importantly, as Leonard Weaver will know, what what makes you what give you the confidence to stand in the pocket? Because most guys try to get away from him, but watching Dimitrenko, you only move six inches either way. So um, what did you learn from that fight, and what gave you the confidence to stand in the pocket and be basically unhittable? Well, I know that was going to be where I was going to be most effective, where I was going to have an, a chance to unload my arsenal more so than he, you know, on his when not giving him, him an opportunity to hit me back as well because I'm inside his arms. I'm away from, from you know, what they, what they say, the, the, the tornado. I'm in the eye of it, you know what I mean, getting, you know, out of the way of all the, all the wind and everything that you want to, you know, say. But, um, Actually, in this situation, you know, not staying back necessarily, but just using move, slight movement to the side, you know, different angles, you know, feints, a jab that most people haven't used against Klitschko or even or, or Dimitrenko like I did, and that will make it more difficult for them to get anything started. You've got to give them something to think about as you're coming in. It can't just be a situation where you're just standing on the outside and you're trying to get past punches throwing anything. If you're not throwing anything, you're not giving them nothing to worry about. So you got to give them something to worry about, something to look to, something to, to fear as you're coming in. And, and I think that's really the key to getting the insides and being able to work. Hey, do you study old fighters and old fights? Yep. Uh, we actually was looking at a, a fight that I, myself, see as this kind of fight right here, which was Joe Lewis versus Primo Carnera. And it's almost identical size difference. I mean, well, Carnero is probably a little shorter than Klitschko, but Joe Lewis is probably a little smaller than me. And um, you know, the, the the way Joe Lewis did it. A lot of people don't like or, or say that Joe Lewis has great movement. He doesn't move around the ring a lot. He doesn't have to. He moves, you know, a few quick steps here, a few quick steps to here. You know what I mean? Just just enough to get out of the way of the offense of of, of the other fighter, and then counter with sharp, very heavy shots. Joe Lewis was about 190, and his head was about 202 pounds. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Klitschko was six foot seven, six foot eight. Six, about six, six and a half. And two six, what? Seven. And about 240 pounds. And you're six feet tall. And about six feet, maybe six feet one on a good day. So are you secure? <laughs> are you secure the knowledge that, uh, that Joe Lewis be the bigger man? Gentleman Jim Corbett be John L. Sullivan. Mike Tyson was beating a lot of bigger guys. Yes, sir. Are you securing that knowledge when you go into a fight? Are you thinking the same thing, or is it all? You just know you're just good enough regardless of size, height, weight, whatever. Really, I don't, yeah. I, honestly, with that, I mean, with what I do in the gym, with I, the way I train, you know, my movement, my ability overall will fare good against, I don't care if you were not feet tall. You know what I mean? It just really doesn't matter. But seeing those guys make me feel that much more confident knowing it's a possibility. And, and there are things that I do better that I don't, I don't want to say I'm a better fighter than Joe Lewis because I can't even imagine to even think of a fixed mouth to say anything like that. But I do move differently and move in, a, in maybe a, a faster way. Throw so a punch is a little faster. So maybe I can get to the target a little better than even he did. And therefore, being able to uh, lower the boom on them guys is easier. Rob, does he have better footwork than Klitschko? Oh, better footwork is out. His footwork is not even, not even on the same some, chart. Got a couple other questions. Not even on the same chart with Klitschko. Two other yeah. questions. Go ahead. Um, 
Vladimir a couple of years ago, would that bring easier confidence into this fight? Honestly, I mean, it could. It could help. You know what I mean? It was it was a good sparring. It was something I needed at the time. But really what that did was just let me know what I had to do to, to improve and to be a world-class fighter. And, you know, getting up there, seeing how professional he was, how he took everything serious, was on time in the gym all the time, was in great shape, you know, did everything he was supposed to, stretched, worked out almost before we trained. All of those things, I now adopted that style of training. You know, being professional, trying to be on time, trying to do everything in, in my in, in my ability to be ready for the fight that, that's upcoming. Question? Go ahead, Ann. How do you get mentally prepared for a fight like this? Oh, just knowing the challenge is there, knowing that uh, this is a, the biggest fight of my life. The next fight is always going to be the biggest fight of your life because that's you're just one more <laughs> one fight closer to retirement and into sealing your fate and your and your uh, and what your identity was as a fighter. So it, it's definitely, uh, you should automatically be prepared. Once you hear you got to fight, it's time to go. Sir, how do you feel about being identified as the young coach? I've been the underdog my whole career. It's nothing new to me. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> size has made me the underdog, and that's just something I'm going to have to deal with. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't mind being the underdog. I, I, I like it. You know, because there's not much pressure on me, honestly. <laughs> in this room, you would think there's a lot of pressure, but there's not really a lot of pressure on me. I'm just going out there and going to have fun and going to enjoy this experience and go out there and win. Got a question over there, so I did. Yeah, um, for everybody who may have just uh, found out about the fight today, where can they tune in? To well, watch? I hate to say it, but <laughs> it's uh, Klitschko.com. Uh, it's, 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 it's this website that you have. You got to stream lives on the, live on the internet. Um, just go to uh, www. W. Klitschko. Com. Fourteen ninety-five. Yeah, fourteen ninety-five. Um, Andy, just want to say congratulations coming this far. Thank you. And thank you. This is really exciting, and this doesn't happen that often. From a, you know, when you look back at history, you have your moment. This is your moment. This is your time. And um, some obvious, fairly obvious advice: win this fight. Look at these guys on the back wall. Yeah. Yeah. One, one fight away. All right. And congratulations, good luck. And I really appreciate that. And just seeing these guys here, you know, having, the, having the opportunity to represent these great fighters. I mean, there's, you know, I'm looking at Evander Holyfield, who fought everyone. You cannot think of a fighter in this era and even in, in, in past eras that he hasn't fought. And you look at Joe Frazier, who was one of the greatest heavyweights of all time, fought, fought Ali, not saying enough, you know, uh, three times. And they were all epic battles, all tough fights. And then you look at Ali, who once again, just like uh, Evander Holyfield, Evander Holyfield, just like him, fought everybody. One of the best talents of, of anyone, had the determination in the heart of, of three or four fighters, you know what I mean? And, and, and Joe Lewis, or, you know, we, we discussed how even he's fighting giants, knocking them down, you know, just doing everything possible uh, to be the greatest, one of the greatest fighters, Jack Johnson, fighting through. You can just imagine what he had to go through in his era, you know what I mean, fighting Absolutely. through all kind of racism and just, you know, just issues uh, that I couldn't even imagine dealing with. And then Mike Tyson, you know, aside from all of the out-the-ring antics that he, he's, you know, offered up to us, I mean, he's been one of the greatest fighters, the greatest heavyweights and greatest fighters ever in history. And, you know, a big cash cow, too. <laughs> this, this is your moment, and enjoy it. Eddie Klitschko has, uh, he has two of the belts, right? Yeah. The, the IFO. No, no, no. He has, actually the has WBO. three. WBO. He has yes. three belts. WBO, IBF, and the IBO. And how many more belts around? And, oh, and he also has the uh, Ring Magazine, which is the, the number one fighter in the world. So at some point in time, is it your goal to bring home all these belts? Man? Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, uh, that's what I'm going over here. And you mack the heavyweight division? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sorry, after, 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 um, after, I, after I go over there and, and, and handle this business like I should do, I'm looking to unify. I mean, obviously, you know, you want to, I, I want to, you know, of, of course, you know, because I'm was a, I'm a mandatory challenger right now, so I would definitely have to give the, the, the mandatory challengers their, their due. But first things first, I want to go out here and unify these belts and become as great and do great things as long, as long in this sport as I possibly can before I retire. Okay. Hey, hey, hey. 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 Hey, hey